If you want to create designs that actually sell on Etsy, then stay tuned because in this video, I'll be taking you through the three steps you need to take to create winning designs on Etsy every single time. I'll show you step by step the research. I'll actually design live with you and show you how the entire process works. And make sure to like this video and subscribe if you end up enjoying this content. So let's get right into it. Step one is going to be validating your niche. Step two is going to be creating trending designs. And step three is going to be optimizing your listings. Starting with validating your niche. Now, I am a firm believer in having a general store on Etsy instead of a niche store. And if you're not sure what I mean by that, all I mean is instead of having a store on Etsy dedicated only to selling dog shirts, I would have a store selling dog shirts, cat shirts, Christmas shirts, teacher shirts, and so on, all within one store. Since Etsy is a platform that people come searching for a specific item, the more search results you can show up in when people are searching for those, the more sales that you'll get. But the real magic is designing for the right niche at the right time. I really teach here on my channel and in my course that you need to be designing for things eight to 12 weeks in advance. That way you can be the first to some of these trends. You can see what's working and then make more of it to really capitalize on those niches. My first year selling print on demand, I felt really behind the entire year. So please, if you are just getting started, please keep this in mind. Instead of designing for what you see people already only selling right now try to be early that way you can be ahead of the pack next time and if you're not sure what types of niches sell on Etsy or on t-shirts in general then I will link down below my print-on-demand niche calendar that has 40 plus different niches that you can design for all year round and exactly when to list them and if you have my calendar you might have seen that right now when I'm posting this in the end of June early July is the perfect time to actually be designing for a super profitable niche which is back to school. Here in the US, we go back to school anywhere from the middle of August to the beginning of September. So right now we're at exactly the mark of when you're going to be wanting to design for these items. Because teacher teams like to get new matching shirts for the entire team every single year. So this can be a super profitable time of year for your store. But don't just take my word for it. Like I said, the first step in this process for any niche that you're selling in, and that's exactly how I want you to use this tutorial, I'm going to be using back to school as my example, but this is the framework for any niche that you're going to be designing for. And the first step again is validating your niche. Over here on Etsy, I typed in back to school shirts. Now, one of my favorite hacks is to actually sort these results by best sellers. Now this may or may not be available in the future, but right now it still is. You can come right here to all filters, hit star seller, apply, and then change the word star seller here in the URL to best seller and click enter. And now this is actually going to sort these search results by only the best sellers. And you can see there's actually 1,079 results that come up, including ads. So some of these are paying to be here, but anything that doesn't say ad by Etsy seller is actually here because it's currently a best seller already on the platform. And we're not even to the main selling season for this niche yet. Now to make this simple, you could just look through all these search results and start validating for yourself that there is plenty of demand. But I like to use my Everbe Chrome extension to make this a little bit faster. It's not anything you have to have, but it does make it quicker. So if you hover over here on the side and I've got a link to Everbe down in the description, if you click product analytics, it's going to pull up all of these search results for you. And you can actually sort these by which ones have the highest monthly revenue. So you can see some shirts like this are getting 2,500 in sales per month and is sold 1,300 times. This one's doing 2,400 a month and is sold 500 times and so on. So there definitely is a need for this niche and lots of shirts that have made lots of sales in this niche. So that tells me that this is a valid niche that you could get into right now because there's tons of best sellers. There's lots of different stores making money in this niche. So why not you? So now that we know there's demand for this niche and that we're designing eight to 12 weeks in advance, that takes us to step two, which is creating trending designs. You never want to copy anyone else or look too similar to other designs in your own niche, but it is important to really study what makes a best-selling shirt a best-seller and start to understand the different pieces and elements that go into making a best-selling design. 
So what I want you to do in this step is go look at the niche that you're going to be designing for. So in this example, it'll be teacher back to school shirts. You'd look through the search results and see what types of things are on those bestsellers. Are they using maybe muted colors? Is every other letter a different color? Are they using things like maybe checkerboard or more retro graphics? Those are all things that I've personally seen in this niche that are popular. But one of my favorite places to go as well is other niches that are selling really well right now. So for this example, you could look at 4th of July, you could look at Father's Day designs, you could look at fun summer shirts, family vacation shirts, camping shirts, other things that are selling right now and see what types of elements are going into creating those. So that can give you a good idea of what the current trends are on Etsy that you can maybe start incorporating in your designs for upcoming holidays and create something new and different, but still based on stuff that you've seen be successful for other people. So let's use this example and we'll use the list because I want you to make a list of the different things you see that go into making a best-selling design. Our list will be every other letter being a different color, muted colors, we'll do a retro graphic, and we'll do checkerboard. Since those are all elements that I've seen successful in this niche, and we'll head over to Canva, my favorite design software, to create this design. If you haven't used Canva before, I do have a free trial for them down in the description for you. So now we need to open up a new canvas on Canva, which is super simple. You come up here to create a design. So now you need to put in the custom size of the canvas that you need. But depending on what you're actually designing for, you can use different sizes. Now, if you need to know what size you need, if you're using something like Printify to print your products, you can come over here to Printify's website and it'll tell you right down here at the bottom of the screen what the print area is. And that's this box with the dotted lines. Theirs in particular is 4,500 by 5100 pixels so if you're designing for say a shirt through monster digital you can use that size in canva and it'll create the design this same size as the box right here so once you have your size in there click create new design so the first thing i want to do is find the retro graphic that i want to use for my design since i think that's easier so to find graphics you can come over to the elements here and you can type in something like retro teacher depending on what you're looking for and you can look through the graphics to try and find something that'll work for your design if you don't see anything here on canva that actually works for you because i kind of wanted to go something this vibe with the cute little eyes and the arms since that's a really popular style in etsy if you don't find what you're looking for my second favorite place to get graphics is creativefabrica.com they're a great website where you pay a small subscription fee to actually get unlimited access to print on demand licensed graphics. Now you can just search for things here or you can come right here to this POD tab and this is only gonna show you items that are good for print on demand. So you can type in something like retro teacher and you can try and find different graphics that you can use for this design. Now for this tutorial, I'm gonna use this graphic right here. I don't wanna use the words teacher life so I'll show you how to delete those. So if you wanted to use something like this, click download and then you're going to upload it to Canva. So once you've got your design uploaded, it into Canva. A really easy way to delete things is by going to edit image, go to background remover, and now what this is going to do is give us access to the eraser tool within Canva. And so here, now I'm going to delete these little teeny smiley faces. Since smiley faces like that typically are copyrighted, so I try not to use regular circle and line smiley faces in my designs. I did cover that in a recent video that was the five shirt designs not to sell, so I'll link that that one down in the description if you haven't seen it yet and then we'll go ahead and delete the rest of this once we have all the pieces we want deleted you'll click done and now we have a super cute graphic without the words that we can add our own finishing touches to you can click the letter t on your keyboard to create a text box and so for this example i'm going to do all of the grades first grade through fifth grade since that's typically what i've sold well in the back to school niche so let's type in first grade here and i'm going to center this above this little graphic but i want to do a more red Retro graphics, since like I said, that's kind of the vibe we wanted to go for. So I really love this one particular font, which is called Peace and Love font. This is also one that I got off that Creative Fabrica website, but there are tons of great retro ones right on Canva as well. You can just type in even something like retro and you'll get a bunch of fun options. So I'm gonna actually change these to uppercase since I think this would make more sense as 
all capital letters. And then I'll put that right here above this. One thing that I think would look really nice is if we made every other letter a different color. So one little hack is if you have a graphic in here and you click the text colors, you can scroll down and it's gonna show you the colors in that photo and let you use them for the actual design. So here I can click through and actually change the colors of each of these letters to match the graphic that I have to give it a really nice cohesive feel. And I'm gonna copy that. I'm gonna do the word teacher below. This time I'm gonna do just in blue instead of every other letter being a different color. And I think I'm actually going to curve this above the top of this graphic to give it a little different look. One thing I like to avoid though is the letters kind of touching each other. So you can click this spacing button here and actually space out the letters a teeny bit. One thing that's gonna make these words pop off a little bit more is by adding an outline to the words. So with this one here for teacher, we can click the effects button and click splice to add a different kind of little outline around the edge of it. But if you do that to this one, you'll lose the every other letter being a different color. So another good way to do that is to double it like this and then use your effects button and actually make it hollow. So now we're gonna just have the outline of the one above it, and we'll just make this something simple, like this kind of off black color. And we'll do the same one down below. We're gonna duplicate the text. We're going to use the effects, make it hollow, and then use this kind of off black color. But I think I want the thickness of this to be a little bit. All right, I think that looks good. So I think the last thing that we really need to add in to that bit that I told you that we were going to use from my list was the checkerboard. So just to add a little bit of interest, let's find some checkerboard. So this one here has a transparent background, so that one will work. So I'm gonna bring it down here to get it how I want, because I wanna kind of put it behind the graphic. So I'm going to duplicate this and overlap them to make a nice long piece. And I'm gonna highlight both of them and group it together. That way they don't come apart. I'm gonna put it right behind this graphic. Double click it by right clicking and go to layer and say send backwards. So now it's behind this other graphic. And sometimes your graphics will get in the way of each other. So like this one here, I'm having trouble clicking because this graphic's so big. So I'm gonna actually crop this by doing this. That way I don't accidentally keep clicking on it. Cause I wanna move the word teacher up, but I've got two layers here, the outline in this one. So again, you can group these together. That way when you move it, they move together. So I'm gonna move that up. And in just a few seconds, we have a really cute retro muted color, every other letter being a different color, teacher graphic that we can post in our store. Now, this is just for example purposes. Please do your own research and go through this process and make something different for yourself. I hope that you enjoyed this example of how to make things look a little better and how to implement all of those different pieces that we found in making the list in our research section. So now we'll save that design. You can go to share, download, PNG, make sure it's a transparent background and save it. Now step three is optimizing your listings. Your thumbnail and your SEO are the most important pieces to the puzzle. Now your SEO, if you're not familiar, stands for search engine optimization. And these are the keywords that you use in your title, your tags, and your description to try and come up in the search results in front of people that are already searching for things. So you don't want to just make up the words that you use for these. You want to, again, do your research based on what other bestsellers are doing and find out what people are already searching for and then buying items. And then the thumbnail piece, this is what's going to get you clicked. So showing up in the search results is only half the battle. You have to have an enticing enough photo to actually get them to click on it in the first place. So we'll show you how to make sure that your thumbnail photos are great as well. So starting with the SEO, my favorite way to get my SEO has always been just looking at what the current bestsellers on Etsy are already using for that niche. Now I know this just sounds simple. You might think that you have to use a bunch of different keyword softwares and focus on finding low competition, high search volume keywords, but really the key here is using what people are already searching for and what's already been successful for other Etsy sellers. 
So again, looking here at the back to school shirts, you're going to come to the product analytics on Everbee, or you can just look through them one by one. And you just want to see what people are using for their titles in their tags. So what types of keywords are they using for their title? What types of keywords are they using for their tags? And look through the top five or 10 different search results for your specific listing. So for this one, I'd look at back to school shirts, and I'd also look at first grade teacher shirts. I'd look at both of those categories and come up with what I think is the best combination of keywords. And it might look something like this. So for your title, I've got first grade teacher shirt, first grade t-shirt, first grade squad, first grade crew, teacher team shirts, back to school, grade level shirts, and that uses up almost my whole title. And then down here for tags, I had first grade teacher, first grade teacher, first grade team, first grade team, first back to school shirt, first day of school, team first grade. These are all things that I got from my research and this is literally exactly what it would look like if I was listing this shirt today in my store. It doesn't have to be more complicated than that. Just try and come up with what you think are the most popular things that everyone's using and put them in your titles and your tags. Then let's talk about thumbnails. That's the other big piece to the puzzle. When you're looking through these search results on Etsy, you'll notice that a lot of the thumbnails are these really great pictures of people wearing the shirts. Now they didn't actually buy this shirt. If you notice all three of these are the exact same picture but with a totally different design. Those are called mock-ups if you're not familiar. And if you type in something like 3001 mock-up or whatever type of shirt you're selling, you'll find tons of great options. You can see actually this is a perfect example from Moonlit Mock-ups, one of my favorite mock-up stores that you can purchase and use for your designs. But there's tons of other great ones. If it's a current bestseller, that probably means that lots of people are buying that and having success in their store. So take a little while and make sure that your mock-ups aren't just generic ones that you got on sale. They're actually amazing, best-selling mock-ups that other people are having success with. So like this one here, I see as a bestseller all the time. You'll see that hundreds of times as you scroll through the search results, looking at different shirts. So that would be a great one that I would actually use in my store for that exact reason. So once you've found some great great best-selling mock-ups. The last trick is actually zooming in the right amount. So let me show you a couple bad ways to zoom in and a couple good ways. So I have this cute mock-up that I made of the shirt that we designed here. This one is a cute one from Fuzzy Mocks on Etsy that I really like her little bubble hair that she did. So you don't wanna leave it all the way zoomed out because people are shopping on their phone. They're gonna see this little teeny tiny thumbnail. And so you have to kind of find a fine line. You wanna zoom in some, but you don't want too much of say the person's face or what else isn't applying to what you're selling. I see a lot of people, they leave like a person's entire face showing. You wanna kind of chop off the person's face. You don't wanna zoom in so far that all you see is the design. I see a lot of people do this. That's not what we want either. We want a healthy balance between having the shirt design be the focus and the main focal point but also showing how cute the shirt looks and how trendy it can look. So you wanna come in somewhere right about here. So I can see the design in the middle, it's prominent, it's easy to read, but you still get to see the cute aspects of this picture. But again, don't just take my word for it, look through all of the best sellers on Etsy and see how far theirs are zoomed in. You can see this is very similar on all of these different best sellers here, is that's what it looks like. And so try to, again, make all of the decisions for your business based off of the research, and that's going to help you get so much farther. So then make sure that you have a couple of great mock-ups for your designs. So here, this is a cute one that I got from Lennon Smith Mocks. That's one I really love on Etsy as well. And then this last one here. And then I do sell mock-ups and size charts in my own store, Stop, Mock, and Roll. So this is actually me in the little size chart. So now that you've done your SEO research and your thumbnail research based on bestsellers, you are ready to start making sales in your store today, and you will be so much more likely to actually get sales on the designs that you create. So this is the full formula. Make sure that you are validating your niche, that you're creating trending design styles, and then that you are optimizing your listings and you will be off to the races and making sales in no time. So use this formula in all of the niches that you design for coming up in the future. 
I hope that you found this tutorial helpful. Thank you so much for staying all the way until the end of this video. Please like it and subscribe if you wanna see more videos like this in the future. And if you still need some more help with designing and feel that this is somewhere that's really difficult for you, then the next video I'm gonna queue up on the screen next is actually how to create best-selling designs. This goes over some of the most popular layouts and types of fonts to use for your business to make it super simple and easy for you to get started with your designs. So make sure to watch that one next.